Hey guys, welcome to my podcast. Thanks for listening. Wanted to talk a little bit about going extreme while dieting or getting in shape or just getting healthy overall, right? We all look for these trends that go, you know, for 30 days, 60 days, whatever it is in this short period of time, which consists of going super extreme. Um, We start to cut things out and, you know, oh, don't look at that. Don't think about it. Don't breathe sugar. Um, Completely cutting these things out of our life. And some things are good to cut out, like alcohol, right? Um, And then there's some things that our body actually needs, like carbs. But yeah, some carbs aren't that great for us, like donuts every day or all day or bags of candy all day. So again, it comes down to moderation and portion control and balance. So unless you're a type A person who really is good at setting specific goals, overachieving them, right? These overachievers, type A people who can really go extremes and find success in it, right? They can really go cold turkey on cigarettes um, and it lasts for years. They can really, you know, go go cold turkey on cutting out sugar and they're, you know, they go with it. Once they set their mind to it, they're going to keep going and they're going to overachieve and kind of surpass those goals. So, For a lot of people, this is really hard to do. And I find that these people just still continue to go for these extremes. Oh, you know, but Weight Watchers is great because they don't have to do this. Um, You know, it's not extreme. I don't have to cut things out. Um, Or, you know, sugar, it's cutting sugar is great because I, you know, I don't have to think about it. I just know what's in sugar, what, you know, what consists of sugar and I just cut it out. Um, and I've tried this diet, I've tried this diet, I've tried this diet. I've talked to people, they've tried Atkins, Weight Watchers, Keto. And I kind of look at them and think, well, they're all essentially the same. In Keto, you're cutting out all the carbs. And Atkins, you're cutting out all the carbs and you're eating those products. Um, all of it is a total lifestyle change. It's a total eating habit change. With Weight Watchers, you're not necessarily cutting things out, right? You're allowed to eat whatever you want. It's on a point system. But if you really look at it, you have to know the points and you have to constantly look at your phone and the app and check how many points are in this. You're at a diner, you're with your friends, you're out for drinks or you're out for this and you're like, hold on, let me see how many points this is. I mean, that's literally changing your life. It's changing the way you're interacting with your friends or your loved ones or whoever's at that meeting with you, um, constantly talking about this dieting. When we talk about flexible dieting, intuitive dieting, those are better in a way, um, but you don't want to be on that long term. Intuitive dieting isn't a diet. It's learning the proper balance of nutrition. It's learning the basics of Nutrition 101, right? The science of what your body needs, what your body uses as fuel sources, and the sources of those nutrients, right? Our body needs protein, our body needs carbs, our body needs fat, but how much of that, right? How much at each sitting before your blood sugar spikes? Um, How much does your body use specifically? How much you weigh or your goal weight? How much you work out your physical activity level, your work activity level, the stress levels, um, and how much your, your body is using, burning, our basal metabolic rate. That's how much your body... That's how much energy your body's using while you're just sitting, breathing, not doing anything. Okay, so then you have those other factors, activity level. So caloric intake, everybody is different. So learning what your body actually needs and then finding out what your body's going to need to get to your goal. A bodybuilder to to gain enough muscle and lose enough fat or just in weight loss to lose fat because you have diabetes and you're trying to lower your A1C. Now we have a different plan for that, a diabetic meal plan, which focuses on portion control of carbs and how to pair carbs with other proteins and fats to lower your blood glucose level. Um, That's intuitive eating. It's listening to your body, finding out what your body needs, 
and how we can get there flexibly, right? So you're going through a midlife crisis, you gain 20 pounds and now you wanna lose it. Okay, well you need to know on the spot how you're gonna lose that weight without going on another fad diet and completely cutting carbs. You can totally lose weight while cutting, while not cutting carbs, while eating carbs. You can also lose weight while you are um, eating pizza. And we could talk about that. It really comes down to caloric intake and getting the right nutrients and the right physical activity levels. You can lose weight without working out. Um, and that's a little tougher. Your calories are a little more restricted. So we're going to touch on all of that. Um, and just, you know, focusing on how to eat a well-balanced diet to increase your satiation, to control your blood sugar levels, to keep your energy levels and also your satiation levels where it needs to be so you're not depriving and binging. When you deprive yourself of things like sugar, like carbs, you are completely depriving yourself. You're, it's a mental, it's a mental game um, where, you know, it's almost like an addiction. Your body's craving it because you're not having it. Um, you can get over that hump and it will be better, but also you can learn to add little things in here and there and kind of play tricks with your mind so that you feel like you've had it, you're satisfied and you know, it's like holding candy from a little kid, right? When they see it at a party, they're going to lose it and go crazy. Why do we do that? We don't need to do that. We can add those things in, those little pleasures and indulgences, and then we're not going to go crazy at that party. Um, we can have a piece and enjoy it and be like, it's okay, because tomorrow I can have a piece, um, not 20 pieces in one sitting. The biggest thing about fad diets or diet trends and keto and all of those are that they don't really teach you much about nutrition. They don't tell you why you're not eating this, why to avoid that. You just think it's bad, it's not good for you. But everybody is different. Um, if you have a gluten intolerance, it's not that great to eat gluten, right? Our stomach hurts, it makes us feel crappy. Um, but for others who don't that have that intolerance, their digestive tract is great and on point, it may feel okay. Um, it depends on processing. Um, that could be a whole other holistic view that people are having now, which is another trend. Um, there could be some merit to it, but there's not enough research um, it done to promote whether um, gluten is bad for us or makes us fat or makes us sick. There's so many factors. Uh, it's really hard to, to prove that. Um, we do know that gut bacteria can make us sick, can change our hormones and our metabolism. Um, so that's why eating things like probiotics and prebiotics can be really good for our health. And sometimes our stomach doesn't like certain things. Again, like gluten, there's people that are allergic to not allergic, but intolerant. Their digestive tract has a hard time digesting certain things that are quote unquote good for you, such as fruit. Um, you People can have a hard time breaking down fructose in their lower digestive tract, the lower part of their intestine, like grapes. So for some people, grapes can cause lots of gassing and lower abdominal pain because their digestive tract has a harder time digesting it. And big part of that digestion happens in that lower colon. Um, so again, that's bad for some people. For some people, grapes are bad for them. So it really comes down to kind of knowing your body. Um, and that kind of goes through an elimination diet which is not necessarily a diet, but you it's kind of a try on error of foods and what foods bother you, what foods work well with you. So that's a whole different diet that doesn't really necessarily pertain to weight loss, right? So this is where all that education comes in. We just hear these headlines or these articles like, this is bad for you. I mean, if I have a hard time digesting grapes, I'm gonna be a online guru and say grapes are bad for you no not necessarily what do you mean i mean there's pesticides in grapes 
There is fructose in grapes, which can be hard for some people to digest. So there's so much that goes into these diets and these trends and what's good and what's bad. Um, so different people have, you know, moral beliefs about foods like eating animals or um, fish. So that's a whole nother realm as well. So we kind of have to take what we hear in the news and online a little lightly um, and remember, you know, how your body works, how you react to certain foods and what your goals are. Um, I think personally in society, I think a lot of women are self-conscious and struggle with, you know, weight or, you know, that fear of gaining weight or not being at the ideal weight that you want, right? Um, And I think I always remember summer coming around and everybody was on this summer, summer bod diet. Um, You know, low carb diet for summer. I got to look good in a bikini. I got to start lifting weights and cutting carbs, no pasta for summer. I just remember hearing all of that and I started to get anxiety every time summer came because I'm like, wait, do I need to be on this diet? Do I need to have a summer body? What is a summer body? Oh my God, should I not be eating this? And it goes back to those kind of extremes. Like, well, if you ate balanced and you um, are nourishing your body and you're exercising and moving your body throughout the whole year, you don't have to worry about summer and dropping this weight starting May 1st to May 31st and be ready for Memorial Day. Um, And I'm not saying that you need to diet all year round for that. Some people don't need to lose weight. Um, So coming back to that, you know, one of my first podcasts of what is dieting, right? Um, And again, it is, of course, when you lose weight, you do have to cut calories, Um, my biggest, not secret, but a big part of my weight loss plan comes down to cutting calories and moving more. And, you know, I really tailor it to certain people, people who have current eating disorders or past eating disorders. Obviously I advise working with a practitioner, um, a doctor and a therapist, psychotherapist, psychologist because there's so many elements into that and I don't really advise calorie tracking for those individuals but I really do provide the tools and resources to kind of learn how to build a meal how to build a plate how to tailor your meal plan for your individual goals daily, what you're doing that day, what you're going to do the next day, um, how you're feeling that day um, without calorie counting. So I really teach the basics of nutrition. And when I was in school in my diet um, didactic program where we had didactic courses, we learned first semester, first freshman year of college was nutrition 101. Okay. We learned what are your carbs, proteins, fats. What are calories? How many calories are in things? Um, Body weight versus, you know, your body composition, uh, BMI. We learned all of those terms, nutrition 101. And that's what I, that's kind of how I program my clients for weight loss is we go back to nutrition 101. This is what your body needs. And then everybody has different needs based off of your daily activity, your body weight, your body composition, um, what stage you are in your life. Are you an adolescent? Are you middle-aged? Are you menopausal, premenopausal? And then your health conditions. Are you diabetic, pre-diabetic? Do you have high cholesterol? Um, What are your nutrient deficiencies? And we go into nutrients. So my first thing is nutrition science. It's adding nutrients. Um, I'm really big on motivational interviewing um, and the trans theoretical model and 
stages of change. So it's a behavioral change. I don't tell you to just count calories and track your macros. Now, for some people that I do have that understand nutrition basics and are looking more into just gaining muscle and bodybuilders and some men, that's kind of the the program I tailor to. But for other people who have no idea, they're just told to, to cut carbs to lose weight, I kind of reverse it. And I'm seeing where you are in your stages of change. Um, the trans theoretical model of change says that there are five stages of change. Con- pre-contemplation stage, contemplation stage, action, um, monitoring and evaluation stage. So there's a couple stages here that I kind of see where my client is at and I tailor it to that. And I'm really mindful of maybe that type of person they are and what motivates them to change. Um, but my biggest factor is that I look at the self-efficacy of the client. So their ability to change, but also I try to instill that confidence in your ability to change. Um, you know, setting goals and then achieving these goals. I don't like to set big goals, um, far-fetch future goals that in three months are going to lose 20 pounds. I kind of reverse it. You know, we'll talk about that goal, but let's talk each week about the small baby step goal and hey, you achieved it um, and how we can move further. So I really steer clear of any extremes, right? Um, any going from zero to 100 real fast. Today, you're going to sh- like throw out all the sugar in your closet, in your cabinets, and you're going to go for a run every day for an hour. For someone who hasn't worked out or hasn't even run since, you know, phys ed in high school, that's going to be really hard and that's going to be really challenging and that's going to kill somebody's motivation. Um, But again, for those type A people, that may really work and that may really motivate them to say, hey, I'm going to try to run a marathon next year. Um, So I really tailor it to everybody's individual, almost personality, right? I'm kind of reading my clients, seeing where they are in their life right now and what has worked for them in the past and also analyzing their current and past behaviors, um, what they do on a daily basis, their habits, what they do for work, how they work, um, how they have achieved their goals, whether that's personal in their career, relationships, or their health goals. Um, So... I think education is the biggest part and that's my biggest, that's my number one priority is educating people, educating people on why diets haven't worked for them in the past, what these diets consist of, what your body needs, why your body needs this, why you're, you know, that's not working for you and kind of moving on from there. So it's, almost a lifestyle change, but it doesn't feel like one, right? I'm not telling you to stop going out with your friends on your Thursday night happy hour get togethers. Um, Although we'll talk about, you know, why that may be hindering your goals, how we can still enjoy that time without hindering your goals. So I don't ask to change. I don't ask to cut a million things out, but we do it in increments in baby steps and we focus more on addition adding things into your diet, adding things into your daily routine that can help you as really opposed to cutting this, taking it out, negative this, negative that. Um, I know we all like cancel culture and we all like to point out the toxic things in our life right now, which I will kind of do with you. But um, hey, we all know that we have that resistance to change and cutting things out. So I'm really against this deprivation and binging, which I do see a lot of in the diet industry and just people who have done diets. You know, I've met people, I've done diets after diets and nothing's working. Well, let's, you know, a lot of it has to do with our mental health and, and looking at our personalities and how we, you know, work and achieve other goals in other areas of our life. So... That is the spiel, the spiel about deprivation, binging, and extreme diets, and how I do things and why I am against extreme diets. Um, 
And again, if you're that type A person, it may work. And even for some type A people, extremes don't work. Um, So thanks for listening. And I would love for you guys to follow more of me and subscribe to my e-newsletter where I like to point out the research studies done on many of these diets and some more health and wellness tips. Thanks for listening, guys. As always, stay strong. Be well. Bye-bye.